I'm here with John S. Williams and Chris L. McKenna of Safety Glasses Required, and I wanted to introduce them to our listeners and our readers. John, Chris? Uh, my name is John Williams. I'm a, a faculty member. I teach mechanized ag here at Fresno State, um, California State University, Fresno. Uh, I've been in, in ag education for 12 years, I think. Um, my emphasis or my what I, uh, my passion is, is, is ag, uh, mechanized ag in the power setting. And it's talking about like engines, transmissions, um, hydraulics, those things, uh, a little bit of welding, um, and then uh, safety, which is all, all, all a part of our entire um, um, curriculum, is safety is in everything. And so uh, grew up on the coast, moved here to Fresno to go to college and kind of planted my my roots and stayed here. So uh, happy to be on your show today. Uh, so my name is Chris McKenna, and uh, I've uh, been teaching agriculture for 13 years now. Uh, me and Johnny, we both went to college uh, here at Fresno State, and uh, this is my third year now at Fresno State, and uh, where he kind of deals with more of the engines, I deal with more of the fabrication side of things. So the welding, the construction, like woodworking, plumbing, electrical, uh, concrete, all that kind of stuff. That's kind of the basis of what I teach. But we also, both of us kind of teach tractors. We both, you know, kind of swap some classes back and forth that deals with tractors and stuff like that. And uh, so, you know, yeah, so we've been here, Johnny's been here for four years and I've been here for three years. And uh, we we actually kind of had an idea. Well, we, what was it, about a year and a half ago, I think? I think I told you, I was like, hey, yeah. we should do a podcast, you know, like, because I've been listening to some and I was like, you know, I think it'd be fun. I think people would uh, enjoy, you know, just kind of like listening to us and, and doing that. And he was kind of like, yeah, I don't know, like, you know, about podcasts. I don't think you'd ever listened to one before. And, uh, you know, and so when, when COVID kind of hit, we were obviously like, you know, Fresno State shut down. So we had to move to a virtual world to, to try to teach. And, and what we teach is, is, you know, shop skills, right? So it's like hands on, you know, activities and to, and to move that into a virtual world is something that was, you know, kind of out of our realm and out of, you know, our area of expertise. But, you know, we started making videos and they were um, horrible videos that we had. We've gotten a lot better at them, but we didn't really know what we were doing. We didn't have the equipment. Uh, but as we started to kind of acquire stuff and as we started to kind of get equipment and start kind of, you know, moving into that virtual world, it was kind of like, you know what, I think we can handle like a podcast, we can kind of do that, because we were already kind of putting ourselves out there, you know, on the internet, which was, you know, vastly different from what we had done before. Uh, and so we just kind of decided, hey, let's, let's start one and, and let's do it. And let's see what kind of traction it can get and what, uh, you know, what kind of audience we can have. So. Yeah, well, I took, a, I'm in grad school right now. So I had a class and we had to listen to a podcast. And I'm like, so I was not looking forward to that. And then I listened to it, you know, walking on my treadmill at home. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then I started thinking, well, Chris brought this up one time. And so I came into his office. You understand every day when I come in um, or when he comes in, we're at each, uh, I either go to his office or he goes to my office and we will spend 30, 45 minutes just talking about what we're going to be teaching that day or, or some kind of new skill or, or, or something we saw. And those conversations were really like really good. And sometimes they'd end up in arguments, but that's just how we are <laughs> because we're very opinionated people. But, um, but we just had, you know, it was just, eh, maybe it would be a good idea to have a podcast and, and go for it. So then it was, well, what are we going to do? And, and, um, it's interesting how Chris and I work very well together on, on everything. Like um, if we have a problem and, and it doesn't matter which area or part of the industry that we're, you know, if that or class or whatever we're teaching, we have an issue, we can talk through it and work through a problem very well. And so when it came to like, well, what are we going to name this? And, and I'm kind of, I'm a thinker. And so I'm always putting stuff down and, and uh, I texted Chris, like, I don't know, like seven or eight different types of titles of it. And Chris is like, nope, I don't like that. Nope, I don't like that. Nope, well, this one's kind of good. Well, let's kind of reframe this. And it was like, well, let's, and then it went to, you know, came up with the safety glasses required because, you know, you, we have signs all around our shop that say uh, foresight is better than no sight. 
and it's where your safety glasses and it's like so all our shops and everything all of our stuff is you know you have to have your safety glasses on this your first line of defense and so it just kind of fit with what we wanted to talk about and it's not just you know stuff that goes on in the shop but you know out on you know when we're uh, doing our labs out on the on our campus farm or, or going on tours or talking about new technology and stuff it it, it just fits so it was just kind of a cool idea that that just started and um it's fun we we, we tend to forget about time and that but it's like oh man oh we got to get recording done and so we tried to stay a week ahead and stuff so what's something both of you wish people knew more about your industries um, in ag education, everything fits under this um, umbrella is called ag mechanics. And, it, and it's it, a lot of times people just think ag mechanics is just welding and, and that, and those things. And we, we tend to forget that it includes, you know, woodworking, it includes electrical, it includes tractors and engines and things like that. But, uh, a lot of times, you know, people just think, oh, ag mechanics, you, you know, it's just stuff in the shop. And so, um, I guess the biggest thing that we try to talk about is, um, you know, we go outside of that is kind of incorporate as much as we can. And you know, we look at everything in industry and technology is changing everything with, with GPS and, and drones and, and things like that, that are, are making um, agriculture so much better. And they call it precision agriculture. And that fits underneath this umbrella. And so um, there's so much more to just being, you know, in our shop. It's, it's, it's just uh, a very big industry and it's a part of all agriculture. It doesn't matter if it's animal science or it's, um, you know, plant science or, or whichever, you know, um, ag mechanics and machinery are just a part of it all. I think kind of picking up off of that, you know, what a lot of people think and their ideas of like what a shop is and what a shop class is, is it's kind of like, oh, like, it's just kind of like dumbed down and, you know, there's not like a lot of like thinking that needs to happen, but uh, you know, Johnny and his like small engines classes, like there's a lot of like engine theory. There's a lot of like physics that we deal with in the fabrication side of things. We're dealing with geometry and we're dealing with, you know, kind of, you know, how do we figure out different angles and how do we uh, you know, handle that stuff. And, and so there's a lot of science and math that's actually involved in it that a lot of people, they don't really think about it. If they're not involved with it, they don't understand it. And, you know, when, you know, we get a lot of students that get into our classes, some of them are kind of shocked at like how much knowledge you actually have to have, not just like the physical aspect of, you know, cutting a board or tearing an engine apart, you know, but the, the mental stuff that you need to have to be able to actually fully understand, you know, how things work and how things operate and stuff. And so, you know, but I, I think that's kind of what we do when we teach classes. I think, you know, students and, and people tend to understand, okay, this is more than just, you know, I'm going in a shop and I'm, I'm running some beads, you know, I'm, I'm actually understanding more, you know, and I have to have more of a knowledge base than, than just a straight, you know, running, running welds and stuff like that. How would you say the pandemic has affected both your instruction and ag mechanics as a whole? Well, it's definitely been uh, kind of a tough road. And, you know, Johnny's probably gonna have a different perspective from me, especially since, you know, from last semester, uh, he had some classes that were in person and I had all of my classes that were all virtual. Uh, and so trying to do, and especially like last semester, trying to do a welding class online is something that is very challenging because it is a very like hands-on like, we need to get into a booth, we need to weld, we need to get that experience. And, and we're not developing students that are gonna be certified welders that are gonna go out and, and do that, but they need to have that experience so that way they have that understanding. A lot of our students, a lot of my students that I have are going to be you know uh, ag teachers, some of them are gonna be shop teachers. And so if they don't get that experience, how are they going to be able to teach their students um, that, that are gonna potentially go into the industry and, and, and do that? And so they need that. Um, but you know, it's definitely been challenging to be able to do that this semester is, is nice because we are going to have in-person labs. Um, so hopefully that's going to kind of curb some of that stuff and, and we'll be able to kind of pick those up, uh, creating like YouTube videos, like may, making sure that we have access. I actually just used one yesterday. I had a student that was, uh, that came in and he wanted to, you know, do some welding. It was one of our little student assistants. 
and he wanted to get some welding practice. But he's like, I don't know how to set up this welder. So I'm like, oh, hey, I have this YouTube video. Like I just sent him the link and I'm like, there you go. You can look at it. You can set up that video, you know, watch the video and set it up. Uh, and so some of those things that is going to kind of change the way that we work in the future and, and just the access to the information. And uh, I, I think one of the huge advantages to it is, you know, and I've talked to my students and I know Johnny, we've talked to them, you know, our students about this, but when our students take a course, they're not just taking a course for a semester, they are building a connection with us and we are a resource to them. Uh, and it's nice with the videos because these students are going to have that resource that they can go to if they ever need any help, if they ever need that. They can always come to us, but they don't have to now. They can just watch those videos again and they can, you know, kind of get that same information that they got uh, when they took our class. I guess to add on to that, um, for me, it was, it was challenging. Uh, in March, when the, the shutdown happened and, and everyone was saying, well, it's, you know, everyone, you know, two weeks, it's two weeks, let's flatten the curve, let's get through it. Um, and we were getting Paul, you know, information or from our, our, our campus administration. And they were saying, you know, we're going to be back open by April 26th or whatever the date was. It's like, okay, we can manage this. It can get through. And then as that date got closer and closer, it was like, oh, well, it's going to be pushed back. It's going to be pushed back. And then it was like, uh, we're going to plan on coming back next fall. And it's just, it's, for me, I had, you know, uh, <laughs> 17 small engines taken apart in, in the shop and 12 diesel engines all in pieces. And it's like, well, how am I going to get through, you know, put this all together? And it was, it was the frustration that came in. And then, you know, for the students, I felt really bad because they got halfway through, you know, an entire semester. And so they only got half the like hands-on skills and knowledge and, and, uh, you know, Chris talked at the beginning about videos and stuff in our first couple videos. And we learned, you know, a lot of different things is, you know, how do we upload it to YouTube? Because our platform we were using, well, it wasn't the best uh, as far as, or had enough, you know, memory and stuff. And so it just kind of, uh, we just adapted and we had to push through. And then going into the summer, I found out that two of three of my classes here at the university we're going to be in person. And then um, I also teach a welding class at Reedley College. And that class was going to be in person for the fall. And so I, I we get the list and my, my classes are on there. And Chris is like, well, what the heck? How come mine's not on there? And it just didn't, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the, the dice was rolled and he just, his number wasn't picked. Uh, and so in the, in the fall, it was, you know, we have to be flexible. And so I was trying to be as flexible as possible if students lived out of town or whatever you know yeah you can stay home and do the virtual side of things but that posed a huge issue because I had half my students that were coming into lab and do the hands-on stuff and then I was still trying to replicate it to a virtual format for students at home that didn't have access to the tools and equipment so that part was really really tough it seemed like I was if I was teaching one class I was teaching two classes at one time um, and so the workload increased and, and everything. And so it's just, you know, you have all these frustrations with the pandemic and, and I understand, you know, keeping people safe and, 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 you know, keeping our industry going. I'm thankful that I'm in education because, uh, you know, I was lucky to, to keep my job and have the ability to, to work from home at times when I needed. And then I look in the ag agriculture industry and, realize that that didn't stop you know the agriculture industry did not stop it didn't matter if it was in the farm or in the packing house or wherever you know people needed food people needed um everything that agriculture provides us and so the pandemic you know maybe slowed them down but they they just it just kept pushing and so i, I take that and i look at what i'm doing and i realize i just i can't stop you know we got to keep pushing through we got to keep working through and and giving our students the best opportunity that we can. And, and I think that's the big thing that we have to, to remember, especially in our industry with such an essential industry, I guess that's the key term is essential, um, that we can push through and just, just keep going. I do think a lot of people when they hear essential workers, they think more of healthcare and they forget about all of the industries that are the backbone to the fact that we can have civilization and have access to food and it's definitely a big issue where, no, these are the people that are the backbone of our country. 
Yeah, you bring up a good point. And, and you know, and it's not just a lot of I don't know, stereotyping. You know, farming is just a guy with a pitchfork. And it, they forget all the technology that goes into it or the amount of acres that their farm has. And But everything from, um, you know, just the, the start of getting the land ready to planting, to harvest, all that, to the trucking, uh, to the processing, all the way through to the, you know, the store shelves is such a huge part of our lives. And, and we look at essential, you know, you, we have the healthcare, we have agriculture, you know, we have, you know, grocery stores couldn't close, you know, those things and, and people needed those, those items and, and to be able to survive. And um, I guess, I guess pandemic to me really, I think opened people's eyes of one, where's my food come from? And two, you know, how do I protect myself for the future and, and have a better understanding of what, how things are done. And I, and I think a lot of people are a lot more in tune to what's going on in our world instead of just thinking, Oh, I could just go to, you know, Vaughn's and get my groceries. It's like, well, I, I go there and maybe limited to one pack of chicken is like, okay, we got to rethink this stuff. So. What is one way you've seen the industry pivot during the pandemic that it, you think will help in the future to know that the industry can do it in this way? You know, I, I've talked to a, a couple of guys who sell equipment and they've had an increase in sales this year for um, whichever reason. But I think the the thing that we're going to see the most is technology. Um, we already knew we had a labor, labor, labor shortage in the state, but I think, you know, with, with the pandemic that increased and changed some things and the way that the companies are, are using technology to, you know, bring mechanization into a lot of aspects that probably hasn't been, or they've been trying to work through it. Uh, I'm sure we're going to see over the next couple of years, you know, where this technology they're developing right now is going to really kind of take over and take off. Um, it's interesting because you think about our tractors and, and things, and there's a company out of Kingsburg that, that makes a, autonomous sprayers and that, you know, it's kind of old news because it, it came out a couple of years ago, but we're going to see more and more of that come into play. And, and you think about that, if I can send one guy out and with a tractor, you know, with five different rigs and he's running them from a, a, a van or a vehicle next to the field that, you know, you're not worried about COVID transmission or, or things like that. And so they're, they're going to be working on, on a lot of things along those lines. And, some of the industries, it's just, it's a challenge to overcome that because we rely so heavily on labor, but I think that's one of the things we're going to see. I think we've definitely seen, I mean, even before the pandemic, there's, there was more of a push with technology, just with stuff that's kind of coming out. But I think this just kind of propelled, you know, that even further. And, then, you know, it's kind of forcing people that, you know, especially people that maybe haven't had, you know, the experience with technology that it's forcing them to, to use technology. It's forcing them to do that. A Zoom meeting, for example, like I very rarely got on Zoom meetings before. And now there's like, you know, tons of them. And, you know, I feel proficient enough that I can, you know, navigate and do it. But before I never messed with it before. I never, i never set it up. I mean, you heard about it. We knew what Zoom was, but uh, we didn't use that. And, you know, I, I think in general, like, you know, just, I, I think there's a lot of things that are going to change you know, not just within the industry, but just in our, in our lives and how we work and, and, and how we operate. I think, you know, there's some significant changes and it may even happen like with our classes. We've talked about with some of our classes, we have some lectures on some days and then there's a lab later on. And there's some days where we only have a lecture and we have that lecture, you know, a lot of our students, that's the only thing that they come into class for. Uh, and so for us, even we may be like, Hey, you know what, in the future, we may do like a hybrid where there's, you know, that, that one day where they're supposed to come in for an hour, we may just do that virtually instead of having them come in uh, and do that and, you know, kind of frees up those students a little bit more and, you know, kind of changes that, but it doesn't, you know, dilute what they're learning at all. It's still going to be, you know, the, the same education that they're getting. It's just going to make their lives a little bit easier, which is something we probably would have, I mean, we wouldn't have never have even thought about that. We would have been like, no, we're going to do it in person, but now it's like, well, we can do it. We can handle some of those things. Um, you know, there's some things that you have to be in person for, right? But there's some things that they don't need to be. And so I, I think we're going to see that change, you know, kind of coming our way. I think John touched on the transparency of the supply chain, especially for food now because of the pandemic. And then 
you also brought up the actual not needing to commute to get your education as much. And it's especially important because a lot of students I know have issues with transportation because they're all throughout the Central Valley. And sometimes it's hard to make it to state on time <laughs> and get parking and everything. So it kind of eliminates that extra stressor for them. Yeah. And you look at like Fresno State is a, is a commuter school. So, I mean, a, a large majority of our students do not live in Fresno. Um, and, and I'm sure that's a lot with a lot of other universities. I'm not, not exactly sure, but, uh, but especially with Fresno, I mean, the university, the CSU systems, each of the, the universities have a certain area that they cover. And our area goes everything down to, uh, around Bakersfield, north up through Merced, and then, you know, all the way west to uh, like Salinas Valley area and then down into Santa Maria, which is a huge area for our students. Um, so, but we, you know, we have to do what we can for, for our kids. And, and we look at mechanized ag and, and our program has grown dramatically in the last couple of years um, to where when I first got hired, I was a part-time, um, actually it was seven years ago, I started teaching part-time and just taught a night class. There's only one full-time instructor in, in Mech Ag. And then, and I got hired full-time. I was the only one for a year. And then it was like, man, we, we need to add. And we were able to hire on Chris and, you know, we've grown and, and allowed, we serve um, six different majors within the Jordan College, uh, which is the Ag College here at the university. And everything from the animal science uh, folks to the uh, industrial technology, ag business students take our classes, plant science. So a lot of uh, diverse student body and diverse majors. And then one thing we also do is, uh, and what's interesting during the pandemic is we have, we do all the tractor safety for our student workers on our campus. And so we had to uh, change the way we taught that uh, because Chris has a class uh, it's a, a night class for four weeks each semester. And like this last semester, he had to teach it virtually. Well, if you're gonna have a student that's gonna go work on a tractor, you can't just learn that virtually. So it was a process to say, hey, we need to get some of these students on equipment. How can we do that? And we have to come up with a, a plan. And so I do uh, extra trainings of, of tractors and forklifts throughout the year. Um, and so it was like, okay, well, you know, you have to have 16 hours training um, about eight of that is going to be done virtually. The other eight, you're going to have to come and get on the equipment and, and learn and stuff. And so it's just, it's the change, the amount of change that's happened in the last eight months, nine months, however long it's been is incredible. And, uh, and it takes think guys like me who I'm not a very good tech guy. I like computer wise. I, I understand technology and tractors and hydraulics and all that. And I can diagnose that stuff and work with it. Uh, what comes to this computer sitting in front of me, that guy in the other office helps me out quite a bit as far as learning that stuff. So, yeah, I definitely am the uh, technology person and <laughs> kind of handling that kind of stuff. I enjoy, I enjoy the technology. And even though there's some things that, you know, I haven't done it, you know, it, it's definitely, you know, been nice. But that's why, like Johnny said, like we kind of complement each other. We work well with each other because, you know, there's some strengths that he has that, that I don't and vice versa. Uh, and it, and it works out. But, yeah, no, the, the, the safety course, you know, we, we've actually, uh, another thing, and, and there's some things that, that we really want to do, and, and especially related to safety, like for me, safety is like a huge, is a huge thing. Um, you know, I, you know, I take it very, very seriously, you know, when we're in the shops and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, with the tractor class, uh, when we teach the safety, we actually have some pretty old, I think they're from the 1980s, like tractor safety videos. Um, and we show them cause they have good information, but it's just kind of outdated, you know, like the, the, the stuff is just old. And, uh, you know, so we've talked about, you know, making a tractor safety video, uh, kind of similar kind of, you know, a parody to that kind of stuff, but just kind of updated, uh, and, and also kind of, you know, local, like, so it has, you know, us, it has our students, uh, in it, our equipment and stuff. Uh, and we've done some kind of short ones we've done you know, how to jump batteries. We've done, you know, how to, you know, uh, hook up a three point hitch. And those are some nice things that we're going to be able to use that we can kind of front load information with students and say, okay, Hey, watch this video. 
and then we're going to go out and then we're going to actually do it. But, you know, they get to see that process. They get to see that, you know, that stuff. And so, you know, we're still going to kind of continue working on those things and, and developing some of those things, not to the extent that, you know, we have last semester because, you know, we're having in-person classes. So there's going to be more of that. Uh, and, and that need is not, you know, as demanding, but uh, it's definitely something that, you know, it, it's kind of changed the way that we're going to operate uh, in, in creating some of those things. And so uh, those are some things that we're going to kind of work on kind of probably this semester, I think we're going to work on, you know, some of that and putting some things together. I think John touched on some of the changes that you've had to make in the industry where it's one person operating one machine that can do multiple tasks. How do you see technology affecting the industry going forward? And how do you think that's going to affect safety? I think, uh, well, technology is going to make things more efficient. Um, as far as safety wise, it's interesting because I've seen, um, you know, some of the autonomous stuff and then it's, you know, there's so many sensors on there. I think there's like, you know, each piece of equipment that's ever made and, you know, they, we have sensors anyways, but this has like a hundred and, something different sensors and cameras and and all of these things that you know spraying is one of those things that you have to be incredibly safe with and it's highly regulated and so this a piece of equipment the sprayer you know just shuts down if something isn't right um, if someone walks in front of it or whatever it just stops i think when we look at safety and we've seen it on, in certain pieces of equipment like you look at a, a table saw which has probably taken millions of fingers over the last you know 50 years um, you know, they have technology in and out where if, if your finger touches the blade, it shuts off and stops. Um, and we're going to see more of those types of things. And uh, we look at equipment, uh, tractors from the 50s and 60s that even had some, you know, safety start mechanisms in there that, you know, nobody even really knew, but we've made it better since then. Like now there's multiple safety setups on tractors to where you can't start it unless you're in the seat and your foot's on the clutch or, or whichever. Um, and so you're going to see more and more of those things. I think when we look at um, as technology changes, you know, we're going more to the digital world and we're going to rely a lot more on, on that, um, especially with GPS and, and mapping and, 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 and those things. And that's really going to kind of take away some of the human error and it's going to change um, how we do things as far as, you know, putting people in, in situations that uh, could cause injury or, or death is, is, is going to be less and less each year. And I think that's how we're going to see those changes over the next couple of years, as far as safety goes, uh, everything from the, the, the shop equipment to, you know, our, our equipment out in the field. I think that's a good spot to end it for today. Is there anything else you would like to add or, and share some of your contact information if any of our listeners and viewers have any questions for you? Yeah. Um, Chris has a email set up for the, the podcast, but I'll give my email. It's J S Williams at CSU Fresno .edu. Um, You can also look me up on the Jordan college website for the, the university. Um, and you can get my office number there and my um, email as well. Um, and then as far as the, the podcast goes, uh, Chris has an email set up or um, some information you can share on that. Yeah, so for the, the podcast email, it's sgrpodcast uh, at gmail.com. Uh, and that'll just go directly, you know, to that. So if there's, you know, things like that, we kind of set it up for, you know, people that, you know, it's a topic if they want to, you know, a topic discussed or things like that. Uh, my, you know, school email is, uh, if you want to contact me directly, it's c-l-m-c-k-e-n-n-a. Uh, at mail.fresnostate.edu. Uh, and that that's, you know, like Johnny said on, you know, the Fresno State website, you can look me up, you can find out all that uh, contact information as well. It's all posted on Fresno State's website. Our uh, podcast gets updated about every Wednesday. Um, uh, every other week we have uh, our big recordings, which are about an hour. And then on the off weeks we call them tailgates they're little talks and they everything from different tools we like to some motivational stuff to even some safety stuff and so it's, it's all embedded in different things so um you know we were on spotify and apple podcasts yeah and um, then i think 
I don't know what other major ones are out there, but you know, it does kind of post, I think, to some other ones as well. But those are like the two major ones I think for podcasts that people listen to. Um, and uh, you know, we we always look for for you know ideas to talk about stuff and research and go through and and go from there. So if any of your viewers want us to look into some things and talk about it you know, let us know and, and email us. And I appreciate you giving us the opportunity to come in and talk. I, I think this is really cool. When you first emailed us, I was like, whoa, like what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so it was, I think it was kind of unexpected. We were like, well, we're, we're just, we're just doing a fun little podcast. Like, I don't know, <laughs> but I think it's cool. I think it's, you know, kind of a cool deal. And, and we appreciate you, uh, you know, reaching out to us and having us on. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. And I look forward to sharing more of your expertise with our viewers. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.